This is it, the two final pieces left to rebuild the Aston Martin. Wait, let's take it back a second. Three months ago, I took the biggest risk I've ever taken by buying a crash damaged Aston Martin Vantage. I spent endless hours rebuilding it, cross-referencing parts from other cars, modifying it, and then getting the all clear from Aston Martin. Oh no, it's not a bad car at all. <laughs> and now we're about to attempt a two and a half thousand mile road trip. Are you feeling confident? Is it done? It's done. The plan? To head from Leicester in the United Kingdom to a place called Portofino in Italy. But we won't be taking the direct route. We'll be stopping at a fair few landmarks along the way for reasons you'll see throughout the trip. That's if we make it. Now, me and Hannah won't be doing this trip alone. We've got Chris Slicks, who's taken his Aston Martin Vantage, which was also crash damaged. And then we have Jack McNeil, who's taken his turbocharged one litre Micra, better known as Boris. A recipe for disaster? Maybe. But regardless of what car we were driving, we all got on the road and headed down to Portsmouth, where we board the overnight ferry to our first destination in France. Saint Malo. Chris, show me your key. Why, why are you trying to flex my key? <laughs> no, just because mine's a real Aston <laughs> no, Martin, not, me, not a Mercedes. You know, me pretend it. No, no, no. You don't need to. You don't need to. So see Chris, has got, Chris has got. Chris has got a nice. transit van key <laughs> with, a, with a Volvo fob. <laughs> yes, yeah, so a transit van key. With a Volvo fob, I'm pretty sure this could unlock or lock a load any of Ford, Fords. Any Ford. Um, and this is actual genuine Aston Martin engine in this. It's, no, the, like, it's the real deal. It's the real, it and is. the real deal Ford Transit key. Yeah, and Volvo fob. Volvo, I think that's pretty reliable. AMG, I would say reliable. And of course, the Nissan. We all know them for the reliability, but maybe I'm speaking too soon. But maybe I didn't, because Boris seems to be eating up the miles as good as both of the Astons. We wasn't too far from our first destination, and it wasn't long until we ran into some really bad weather. But rain or shine, we powered through it. And all the cars seem to be soaking it up so well so far. That was carnage. And it wasn't long until blue skies were ahead, the roads dried up and we reached our first destination, Le Mans. Le Mans, the home of the 24 hour race. Did you know in 2020, Aston Martin Vantage took five out of eight wins here, taking home the trophies. The trophies. <laughs> we made it to Le Mans. And the cool thing about this, you can drive the circuit. Well, at least parts of it. I'm not sure what actual corner we're on but this is actually part of the road which is mental and then here's the gravel <laughs> after driving endless motorway miles already it was nice to get a foot down a bit in all of the cars being that we're at a racetrack yeah and that we last time was at a racetrack we had a little sound test between oh, the did, 350z yeah. and the Gallardo. i think the 350z won that I think we should do sound test mark two versus. Should we find a good spot to do it? Let's yeah. Go, let's go explore the track. We're going to find somewhere good to do the sound test. Yeah. And we'll check back. We continued exploring and driving all three cars, having so much fun. Maybe too much fun. But then we found the perfect place for a sound test. <laughs> It's okay, it's okay, but it's a bit fake, isn't it? It's those turbos. Right. It just, it just sounds a bit nuts. Here we go, NAV8. It's a lot quieter. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
And how could we leave Boris out of this? Time for his sound test. I'm waiting for a bottom end. We've got a clear winner. Okay, so we got a little sidetracked and we needed to get back on the road because you see, we were still here in Le Mans and the next main destination was Monaco where of course we needed to get redemption from the last video. But all of a sudden, Jack seems to have a few issues with Boris's gear linkage. I think what's happened is the bolts come loose or off and it's basically when I was building it, the the, I put the bolt in the wrong way around and it kind of it had the exact same feeling as this It wouldn't go into gear because the bolt was blocking it from going into gear. So we needed jack. I don't know where jack is I don't know if people would have had money on it. What car would probably break down first, but this car's not broken down yet All right, it's okay. Still, it's have an it. It's, it's got a small going. issue it's, it's just it's just it decides what gear it wants to go in So what it can't go into gear? Is it all floppy? Well, no, no, no it, it can but it, it's like stiff. It's like it I told you try to cheat. <laughs> oh, yeah it does the, the samurai sword for a bread knife. Yeah, might bread work. knife might do it Jack managed to temporarily bodge something together just to get the gear linkage working for now and as we were starting to run out of daylight we checked into the first hotel of the trip in Orador Seglan, where we would stay the night and then tomorrow morning continue the journey. Well, you can tell we're not in Italy just yet. And it's a little bit dull, but we've still got at least another two more days of driving, but plenty more roads to get on on the way and I'm pretty happy to be back in the Aston. Now, whether we like it or not, all of our cars have a history that we cannot delete. Just like the next village we're about to pass through of Orador Seglan, which was invaded by the Germans in 1944. And we can see the damage that was caused by them because everything was left the way it was. But that's not always the case with cars. But luckily, we've got Car Vertical for that, which works in over 20 different countries and have sponsored today's video. It only takes me two seconds to bring a report up from an Aston Martin Vantage. After I put my registration in or my VIN number, this is what comes up. I've got a green tick to show that there's been no mileage discrepancies with the car. A green tick to show it's not been recorded as stolen, but an amber light for an accident, of course, which we know. And also a green tick to show that there's no outstanding finance. When I scroll through the report, I can see every time an ownership was changed and when the damage was detected. Further down, I can see the graph for the mileage and there's not many records of it. And the juicy part, the damage. I can see the photos of when this Aston Martin was auctioned off at the car crash auction website and these were the photos of what it was like when it was crashed. It's a good job it doesn't look like that now. And just to show you what a good report looks like, here's a report on my E46 M3, which will soon be back from paint. All green ticks at the top, no mileage discrepancies, and there's no reports of it being damaged. So to check your car out or a car that you're potentially about to buy, use Car Vertical with the link in the description box below. And with my link, you're gonna save yourself a nice bit of cash. Let's get back on the road. Things were looking good for all of us that day. But that gear linkage problem Jack had seemed to come back up to bite him. So Jack, Jack is underneath. The car's fine. What's over there? Just trying to. So, Jack, I've got some news, mate. If this was Top Gear. Every man gets left behind. <laughs> Everyone go watch Jack's video if you want to find out what happened to his car. Me and Chris are gone. See you, Jack. Rules are rules. Me, Hannah and Chris continued on, leaving Jack around here whilst we powered through to the south of France. And seeing as we could go at our own pace now, we decided to test the difference between the two Astons. That's the aspirated Aston and the turbo Aston. Chris is gone already. A bit of difference. The weather was getting better and so were the roads. We crossed the Malau Bridge and if I'm right this is the highest bridge in the world. We've literally not even touched anywhere near where we're meant to be going on this road trip so far and I can tell you that this is definitely the best car we've ever taken on a road trip. It is so good. I wanted just to explain how quick and how good this car is 
roads like this. Like, it's been awesome cruising, but when you come to have to a slower car in front and you want to overtake, it does it. And there's, you have like ultimate confidence in it that it will get around that car with ease. And we've got it in track mode now. We've got track mode suspension on it as well. And we'll just demonstrate how quickly it overtakes a slower car in front. Three car overtake. We stopped once more to fill up and then we heard from Jack. Jack's run out of fuel. Um, we didn't leave him, we were going fairly slow. Very slow. Yeah, very slow, but I think Jack's incapable of following a sat nav. We all have walkie talkies in the car. The problem is Jack can't hear is because he has all of the windows down as he has no aircon. His fuel tank is half the size of the Aston's and a wrong turn left him stranded by the side of the road. What happened, mate? So I went to the roundabout, and obviously, because you guys ditched me, I had no clue where to go. <laughs> Why would he actually went it? slow? And, then, and I went around the roundabout like three times, like, wait, which one's the second next to it again? I was like, I think it's this one. And then, yeah, I, it wasn't that one. I just want to show you some it. Nice full tank I've got there. Oh, it's actually, you know, it's weight saving when you have no. <laughs> Jack was back. And now he could join us for the drive along the south of France towards Monaco. The roads were incredible, the views were incredible, and we passed some amazing small villages that we never would have saw if it wasn't for this road trip. Saint-Tropez was en route, so it was only right that we drove through to check it out. And there was even people that recognised me from the channel there. <laughs> it's absolutely mental. And as we was getting pretty close to Monaco, we wanted to give the cars a quick scrub over before arriving there. And how good does that Aston Martin look? It makes me smile from ear to ear. And a couple of miles later, we arrived in Monaco. The hotels in Monaco are a little different to usual. You park up outside and then the driver comes to collect your car and he does the rest. The Aston Martin seemed to fit in quite well, but Boris on the other hand. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Oh my God, Jack. Look how you parked. The wife is yeah. doing it for me. Monaco, the home of the famous Grand Prix, also the home of the rich and famous. We did our best to try and blend in. But we didn't come here in an attempt to try and blend in. And we'll get on to why we came here later. But the next morning, as we was driving around enjoying the sights of Monaco, I bumped into someone, or should I say something, which was so unexpected. And what are the chances of this? My old BMW M4 has also made it to Monaco. <laughs> and the new owner is right here. 
<laughs> How are you finding it? It's great. It is excellent. It is excellent. What a car. Oh, it's so good to see it again. Yes, I do. <laughs> and it's still got the key tag. It's still got that. The money Absolutely pit. min. Look what a throw pat. It's a money pit. Is it still a money pit? Correct. <laughs> wow. This is a different steering wheel. You picking up some... No way. <laughs> I remember this car being ridiculously loud. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Oh, we're gonna get kicked out. Oh, it's open now, it's opened up. The valves have definitely opened now. Oh, well, I'm giving it one blap and then we're gonna get kicked what out. A blap. Three, two, one. Okay, that's it. Okay, that is loud. That is loud. On a mission, best believe it, as for a the M4 was so cool to see again back on the road. It's like being reunited with a long lost child. Makes me so proud. But that's not the reason we came here. So last time we gambled 1,000 euros at the Monte Carlo Casino. That was the total fuel cost that it cost us in the Lamborghini to get here. And we lost. This time we've came for redemption. Let's go. The famous Monte Carlo Casino. As I've mentioned, it took us for 1,000 euros before in the previous video and we're here to get it back. Or could this be the worst idea I've ever had? Again, parking outside the casino is another ordeal in Monaco. In their own words, they only let supercars park out the front. Every time I've bought one of my crash damaged cars, we've managed to get it outside. And this time, both of the Astons got at the front. But what about Boris? He got denied, he got denied. No. Oh no! Oh no! Jack had to drive back to the hotel and then walk back up to meet us. But look at that, two Aston Martins parked outside the front, both of which were crash damage. Little does anybody know. Right, this is it. There's uh we all know what it's like with filming in here, so we'll get what we can. Hopefully, even if we get the audio of this. Good luck, boys. We're good, we've got this. We're gonna win. No drama. We're gonna win. So here we are on the secret camera inside the casino. Last time a thousand euros went on black. This time I'm going for red. If we win, we'll get our money back from last time. If we lose, we're down a total of 2,000 euros. So we're looking for a red number. Here goes nothing. We are never going back in that casino. I lost. So the next morning, we said goodbye to Monaco and we headed along the coast to the destination we originally set out for, Portofino in Italy. Now the thing is, I saw some incredible photos of Portofino online before we went on this trip. But what I didn't see was the roads. Oh god, holy f***ing shit, this is not cool. 
trailers are coming through, Land Rovers, the road's about enough width for a flipping oh my God, you've got a sausage. Idea what beeping is doing because it doesn't move anyone on. Straight, 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 straight. We realised that the locals came up with a theory that if you beep the horn, it makes the car thinner. Oh Stress. <laughs> Literally, what's going to come next? A tractor. <laughs> After we escaped the narrow roads, untouched, we made it into the centre of Portofino. Well, all three cars made it to the centre of Portofino and what a place Portofino is. But it's not quite, as we found out, a driving city. But there's only one place we can go where we can get driving roads. I'll be honest with you, my original plan was to end the trip in Portofino. But after spending months rebuilding an Aston Martin to take it to a place I couldn't really drive it, it felt wrong. So we got in the cars and headed 246 miles up through Italy to a place called Stelvio Pass. We stayed in a hotel that night and it didn't disappoint. It was like Stelvio was already putting on a show for us. Whoa. Good morning. Look at these views. Unbelievable, Jeff. Stelvio was in touching distance now and this part of Italy was just breathtaking. I even took the passenger seat to take in more of the views. We are heading up to Stelvio's Pass, one of the best driving roads in the world. I've never been there, I've only saw videos of it. It looks absolutely amazing and to drive the Aston Martin on there, it's going to be what this car was actually made for. Cannot wait to get there. Let's, oh, let's get there. <laughs> Would you look at this? And we're not even at the top. How are we? 6,700 feet above sea level. Thanks, Anna. 2,052 meters. <laughs> <laughs> Anna. It's really here. These parts of the earth actually exist. Stelvio Pass. 15 miles of raw hairpins and solid driving roads. Holy moly. Should we do it then? Let's do it. This is what track mode was made for in this car. 
this car is absolutely perfect for it. The brakes are good, the downshifts are better, and then we're into a hairpin. miles all of the rebuilding all of the work the effort the money that put into this car is worth it for this moment right now even losing that money at the casino this has been one hell of a trip and to finish it off on this road has been there's just no words for it i didn't even think roads like this existed we continue driving stelvio pass for the rest of the day. Making most of the time that we had and making the most out of our cars. This also gave us time to think about all the memories that we created on this road trip. Good memories and not so good memories. But the point is, it was the cars that brought us to this destination the cars that brought us together and the cars that brought us memories. So if you're watching this, thinking about going on a road trip with your mates, go and do it. It'll be the best thing you ever do. That was honestly one of the best things I've ever done. Maybe ever. <laughs> The sun is just going down now over Stelvio Pass and we're finishing this trip off with the smell of brakes and the sound of a cooling fan. <laughs> exactly the way that we wanted to end it. And what a trip it's been. It's literally been the best trip the best. in possibly one of my best cars that I've ever rebuilt. It is such a good, all-round car and this is the exact reason why I push any of you guys to just go and follow your dreams I took a risk about three years ago leaving my job and this it, this is part of my job it is absolutely unreal and we've still got a long journey back in the Aston Martin but we are gonna leave it right here what a trip what a journey if you've enjoyed it if you've enjoyed this journey with us hit that subscribe button hit that thumbs up button and I'll see you in the next video <laughs> it's not a vibe. It's not a vibe. <laughs> oh, yes. You're like a drug there. I just can't.